Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Time in the United States, which is 10 a.m. if you're in Australia or 1 a.m. if you're in the UK. I hope all you guys and girls are well. Uh, remember, if you do miss the live streams, you can catch up and watch the streams at any time by clicking the videos tab on my Twitch page. Uh, we're going to continue working on the House in the Hollow game, which you can wishlist right now on Steam. Type exclamation mark Steam in Twitch chat to get a link to go to the Steam store page. Or if you look in the panels below my stream, you'll see uh, a graphic that says wishlist the game. You can click that and that'll take you to the Steam store page as well. Um, we're working on the study for that game and we're working on the assets for the study for that game. Uh, yesterday we were working on the mirror which we finished and we started working on the main curtains that I want to put up on the mezzanine level. We're going to continue working on those today. So we're modeling in Max, UV mapping in Ryzen UV and texture mapping in Substance Painter. Uh, I'm just going to grab a quick drink. Excuse me for two six. Clang, clang, clang. All right. So let's jump straight in, shall we? Uh, remember, as always, if you have any questions while I'm working, feel free to ask. Pop into chat and ask. If you just want to say hello, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. Android Lust. Is that a quick drink of coffee? No, that's not coffee. <laughs> that's actually water. Now I'm going to have a quick drink of coffee. That's it. That's the stuff. The water's just to wet my mouth because I get a dry mouth because I talk too much. You know that Android dust. I'm never shut up. <laughs> so yes, we're going to jump into Substance Painter now and continue working on that curtain we started yesterday. So the only change I've made since you saw me yesterday on stream was I brought in the, um, the wooden decorations that go around the curtain because we want to texture those up too. And I knew if I didn't bring them in, I'd forget to do it. So, uh, so let's continue on, shall we? Let's look at this gold part of the curtain. Okay. Let us look at a smart mask. And let's go with... Let's try this one. Dirt soft edges. Play with the curvature. Okay, I'm, I'm going to turn all. Uh, which one am I turning off? I'm turning off this one. I'm going to turn off the hide information. I just want the color information. Oh, let me get my chair organized here. There we go. Okay, let's see now. I don't know if I like this mask. We'll see. We'll see if we can get it to work the way I want. Probably, maybe, probably not. Some of these masks work better than others. This one's one of the ones that doesn't work so well. Let's try a different one. Let's just remove that uh, black mask. What else we got? <clears throat> Let's look at the fabric edges damaged. I'm just trying to introduce a bit of color variation in the gold. That's what I'm trying to do here. Okay. 
Okay, that's a good starting point, but let's keep going. More, I say more! I'm going to... What am I going to do? I'm going to duplicate this darker underlying gold. We'll drag that up above the layer stack. We're going to set the blend mode to pass through. Actually, let's just play with the blend modes a little bit. Looking for a contrasty sort of colour. But it has to be the right contrasty sort of colour. Alright. See if we can't work with this. Let's look at another mask here. <laughs> Ampil, is it? Ampil? My apologies for mispronouncing your name. Ampil, thank you for the follow. I do appreciate it, guys. When you follow me on Twitch. So thank you, Ampil, for the follow. Uh, we're going to throw down this mask. Uh, and again, I'm going to turn off the hide information on that layer. And let's play with the mask a little bit. Now do remember, like I said, if you're new to my channel and you want to know more about me, you can go to phildoes3d.com. So my Twitch username, phildoes3d, put a .com on the end. That'll take you to my website where you can check me out in more detail if you're curious. Uh, do remember too, if you want to join the Discord server, I've just popped a link in Twitch chat. You don't have to, but um, there's a, uh, a gallery section where you can show off your work. But don't post links in my Twitch chat unless you're a sub to my channel. Uh, everyone there can post links on the Discord server, which is why I set it up, because I love looking at the work you guys and girls are making. The whole reason I'm on, or one of the main reasons I'm on Twitch is to actually encourage you guys and girls to do 3D. Because it's fun. Now I'm just making some adjustments here while it's at 100% at the moment, the colour. I'm going to knock it back in a minute. But leaving it at 100% for that at the moment while I do the blending helps me see exactly what's going on. If I knock it back too soon, um, it makes it harder for me to see what, what's going on. So now we can actually, we can either knock back on the mask might be better or we could knock back on the actual layer but I think we just knock back a little bit on the mask confusion hello sir to you as well good to see you confusion I'm just going to find that underlying layer it's this one here How's your day? I'm good. Yes, no, I'm good. I got a good night's sleep last night. I went to bed early. It was like about 12.30, midnight. Just after midnight, I went to bed instead of my usual two in the morning. So I got an extra two hours sleep, so I'm feeling good. I hope you're good. Okay, now I'm just going to look at knocking back the underlying mask just a little bit because I just feel that it's a little dark. was great, good to hear. Um, what do I want to do here? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm 
I'm just trying to um, envisage this in the in the actual level uh, in the in the room that it's going in. So I want to make sure the colours are correct. It's a little difficult to tell until it actually goes in the game. Um, I don't want the curtain to be too dark because it's such a large object and it's in a big room. Uh, I want to try and avoid making the actual fabric too dark. I want it to be quite light. I think it would look better. I just. I think what I might do is I might jump into Alchemist. I just want to create another velvet material in a gold, a gold that's a little bit lighter. So let's um, jump, actually before we do that, let's just do a quick save here in Substance Painter and jump into Substance Alchemist. Alrighty, let's look at Wait, let me okay, alright. Just wondering why come on. There we go. <laughs> Better late than never. So this is the actual gold fabric we're using at the moment. What we might do is... See if we can't get a blend going on. Actually, I'm just going to remove that. I'm going to go into my... Uh, filters. I'm going to do a color variation. And we're going to set it to three colors. What? And we're going to go to the yellow. Really bright yellow. Put more of an orange yellow. And maybe a lighter, lighter orange. I'm just going to flip between these colors to do a comparison. one yeah we're going to use the dark one um this is the one we have in the engine at the in substance painter at the moment which is fine i'm just wanting to create another one that is a little lighter i'm just going to take out some of the saturation i think though in fact we might see what a dirt layer looks like on top of this Again, I'm just trying to introduce a little bit of color variation over the um, 
the color of the material. Pull it back just a little bit. Like so I want to create a uh, another velvet material that I can act that I can use as like a highlight color. So let's save this. I'm gonna call it my velvet yellow. Okay, now we're going to export it. into its own folder in my shell just to keep things nice and organized any, anytime I create a unique material I like to put it in its own folder uh, we're going to save it out as a 4k material or substance banker and just wait for Alchemist to get its act together and do an export for me thought it crashed there for a minute. <laughs> I don't know what it did. <laughs> Phil was freaking out. We did save it to our shelf though, so if it had crashed it wouldn't have been a big big deal. Alchemist I found to be a little bit buggy as far as the program goes. Um, Substance Painter is generally pretty good. Alchemist though, Alchemist can be a little bit fiddly, a little bit temperamental at the best of times. You see what it's doing here. I don't know why it's doing that, but anyway. Just being a bit glitchy. It is exporting. It just does take it a while up here. You'll see the export bar progress eventually. Now I know this is a very yellow velvet color. Um, we can knock it back though once we start mixing it inside a substance painter if we find that it's just too too yellow, too vibrant. I just want to use it as a contrast color for the material. And it's starting to export now. So, what can we talk about while we're waiting? Uh, Android Lust says crashing this early in the stream would be a bad omen. It would be. It's not crashing. It's just a visual glitch. The program is glitching in and out. Just Alchemist being a bit glitchy. Uh, I think the problem. I've actually no. I don't know if it's uh, something to do with a new Windows update or maybe an Nvidia driver. I don't know. <laughs> problem, but um, but they. Both Alchemist open, Substance Painter is open, and I have 3D Studio Max open as well. They all use the DirectX shader, so they're all competing with each other for resources on the graphics card. And I think that's what was causing the Alchemist to glitch in and out, the visual anyway. Because they all want to use that the viewport, DirectX viewport. They all fight each other. It's almost there. Alchemist can be a bit slow to save out. I don't know why it's so slow, but it is slow. I mean, we are saving a 4K texture, but still. But that's why we save, you see. That's why I save often and regularly, because uh, you never know, and I never trust this, this any piece of software not to crash on me. You know, even if you have autosave turned on, which I don't, uh, for any of my software, you still should save regularly, manually anyway. Because the autosave might not kick in in time, so you know, you could be working away and then the program crashes before the autosave kicked in to save out your progress, so... Always do it manually. It's the safest way to go. Come on, Alchemist. Man, you're slow. I think you can just see it up here underneath of my overlay. The little bar is almost there. Almost.
Um, so yeah, we're going to jump into the Unreal Engine pretty soon. Once I've done the curtain we're working on today, I want to do a snake box to, max, to match our snake mirror. Uh, it's already uh, modeled. I just have to UV map it. So we'll probably do that in a minute once we're finished doing the curtain here. Um, and so once we've done the snake box, then I think all that's really left for me to create is probably the floor for the study, which we'll do in Substance Painter. It's just going to be a plane. It's not going to be too, too anything too outrageous. <sighs> Got it finally exported. Um, so, and then we can jump into the Unreal Engine and actually start um, putting the study together. Now again, if you're planning on playing the game, you probably should not watch the streams if you don't want spoilers when I jump into the Unreal Engine. I'm going to do my best not to give away anything as far as gameplay goes, uh, but you will see me actually putting these the room together. So if you, don't, if you don't want any idea of what the graphics are like, don't watch the stream. Um, but, and I'll do my best not to spoil anything as far as uh, puzzles and stuff go while I'm making this study. But I can't promise anything. Uh, let's go into our materials and search for that new material we just made. Come on. My velvet yellow. That's the one we want. Let's drag that to the top of our stack. And it is very, you notice in, in Substance Painter, it's a bit more toned down than what it was in uh, Alchemist. But we're just going to be using it as a highlight color. So let's go to our Smart Mask. And let's find something cool. Let's look at... Let's going to look at the dust surface. Uh, again, we're going to turn off the hide information on this layer. Let's play with our mask. Uh, Confusion says, if I'm in the studio and I don't feel like working, I save three times in Alchemist and the day passes. I know. Can you believe how slow that is to save out in Alchemist? It takes forever. And... Like I said, fair enough. We, uh, we are using a 4K... We're exporting a 4K texture, but... Man, it takes forever. <laughs> I don't know why it takes so long. Come on, Adobe, you've got the money. You're a big company. Fix it. Fix it. No reason you can't fix it. Fix it. Just back a little bit on the curvature. Pull down a little bit on that. The world space normal. Doesn't really change much. Um, yeah, that doesn't change much either. And I'm going to play with the scatter. We can try doing an invert to see if it looks any more interesting. Actually, the invert probably does look a little better. Oh, choices, choices. Um, no, probably that way. And we might just pull back just a little bit on the blend. Actually, yeah. I'm just going to start, I'm just going to play with the uh, mixing a little bit to see if there's anything that might look interesting. Because you never know. Changing the mixing blend mode can sometimes create, make an interesting looking material. Sometimes not. No, we'll go back to normal. 
and I'm just going to change the blending a little bit. Just going to knock it back just a touch. All right, let's do a quick save. Let's look at the um, at the wooden bits here. The actual just waiting for it to finish saving out. Uh, the decorative pieces, which are going to be wood. So those, the tie here, and a little uh, curtain holder. So let's switch to the right layer. Go into the materials that I created for the house in the hollow. And let's look at this wood. Oh, actually, before we do this, um, I need to actually go into Max and assign vertex colors to our model because I haven't done the wooden bits. So let's do that. So we're going to sub object and we'll select these wooden pieces. We'll give them their own vertex color. Let's just make it a red. And then these decorative pieces here. Let's give them their own material and let's make those, I don't know, a pink. Pinky purple. Uh, and then we have the lion medallion thing here. Let's make the line a different material. So let's make that an aqua. And then we have the ring. Let's make that its own material. Let's make it a green. And then we have these decorative pieces. They would all be separate objects, wouldn't they? Just to make life difficult for the film. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I didn't select anything I shouldn't have. No, that's good. Let's make them their own color. And let's make that, I don't know, a darker orange. Okay, and then this piece here, let's make it its own color and let's make that, um, let's make it a bit gray. Okay, let's just turn on vertex coloring so I can make sure that I've hit everything and I haven't forgotten anything. Oh, the curtain rod. I did forget the curtain rod. Actually, it can be left white because we can, white can be its own color as well, so that's fine. Okay, let's turn off vertex color. Uh, let's re-export the model. Let's just do a quick save. Jump back into Substance Painter. Uh, we're going to edit our project and re-import the model. We are going to have to bake out our map. So hang on, just let me... We don't have to re-bake out the curtain because the vertex colouring didn't change on that, but we do need to bake out... Uh, actually, we need to bake out the wooden part, so I'm just going to change into the correct layer there. 2K, low poly is high poly, making sure our IDs are set to vertex color, not material color. It all looks good. And we're just going to bake out the wooden deco part. Now, uh, I know where I'm placing these inside the level and it's actually going to be going near uh, another wooden, it's like a wooden arch in the, in the room. And the wooden arch in the room is actually uh, cherry wood. This is a chocolate wood. So what we're going to do, I'm going to um, 
remove this blank layer. This is its own folder. I'm going to mask with color selection just to the wooden part. And I'm actually going to find a cherry wood that we used for the other parts of the furniture. Let's see here. Um, let's look at this one. I'm going to drag that above at the top of our layer stack. Uh, and again, I'm going to mask with color selection. We are going to group both of these together. <laughs> Where is my group button? Well, maybe I. I group them. I need to select both of them, that would help. <laughs> and group them. I'm thinking, where's the group button? But I only have one, one layer selected, you can't group one layer. Um, now we're going to go and throw down a smart mask. And probably go with surface worn. This is Play with our mask mixing. I want to pull up, a, that's the chocolate wood, that's the cherry wood. I just want to get a bit of a mix between both of them. And we want to mask with color selection on our group. And that should be good. That should give us a good um, match with the other pieces of furniture that are in the um, in the building. Okay, let's keep going. And I want this to be a metal I think because why not so let's find an interesting looking metal uh, again these are smart materials I created for the game let's have a look at this one Uh, and again, we're going to mask with color selection to that decoration. Let's do a quick save here, just to be on the safe side. All right. Let's now look at these other pieces here. Uh, we'll move to this one. We'll leave the line for the last, for, at the end. Um, and for this, this could be a wood, or it could be a metal, or it could be both. Android Lost says, after I complete a few goals, I want to learn Substance Designer. Yeah, Substance Designer is really cool. Uh, it, it is pretty full on. I don't use it. I have played with it briefly. Uh, it, it is a really cool program, but yeah, it is pretty full on. Worth, worth learning for sure, particularly if you use Substance Painter quite a lot. I'm just going to close that and we're going to look at this one. It looks quite nice as gold, which is fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, mask with color selection to both the gray 
and also to the green. All right, let's keep going. Oh, I'm just going to remove the ambient occlusion. We don't need that. Still save. And let's look at this gold. Again, we're going to mask with color selection to the lion and also to the ring. And that's fine, but let's get a bit more variation going. So let's also throw down um, I want something a little bit more shiny. So what have we got here? What have I got to work with? Okay, the, I, I created this smart material. Let's have a look at it. Again, I'm just going to throw it down. And that's good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to group both of these together. We don't want it everywhere, we just want it on this bit here. So I'm going to mask with color selection to the head and to that gold ring. And now we're going to do a mix with a mask. And let's go with, let's have a look at stains and scratches. Let me, let me undo that. I threw it on the wrong layer. It needs to be down on this layer here. That's better. Hang on. Bill's getting a little confused. Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking, what, what's going on here? There we go. So I'm just going to use this to do a, a bit of a mix as to how much of a bright gold I want as opposed to the duller gold. Better. Just got a bit, bit of the lighter gold here and there. Because who doesn't love gold? Nobody. Everybody loves gold. So if we pull back. Oh, we forgot the curtain rod. So let's do that. And that's pretty simple. I just want that to be a brass. So... How shiny do I want it to be? That's the question. We might use one of these smart materials I've already created. Let's have a look at this one. I'm just going to collapse that group and throw this one down. 
wrong layer. <laughs> Let me wait for substance here and undo that. We don't want gold curtains. Gotta make sure I'm in the right layer. There we go. Again, I'm just going to uh, do a save, just on the safe side. Now let's throw this down. Now that we're in the right layer, once substance gets us act together. He's wanting to throw it in the wrong layer. So maybe because I'm hovering over the incorrect thing. Let's try that again. There we go. It helps if you put it hover over the correct part of the model. Um, we're going to mask with color selection to the rod. Again, we've only got one side of polygons to save polys when we bring it into the game engine. But we'll use a two-sided material to fix that when we get into Unreal. Now I'm just, I'm going to do a quick save and I'm going to have a look at our curtains here. I'm just not completely sold on this gold colour. Again, it's going to be hard for me to judge until we actually get it into the game. Hmm. Um, we could make it. I'm just wondering whether a green might look more interesting than a gold. A green velvet. I'm just trying to think if there's a way for me to do a color alteration inside of Substance Painter without having to jump back into Alchemist because Alchemist is so slow. I don't think there is. Um. Is the color correct? Hmm. Might be easy for me just to create a new material instead of messing around with the filters. Yeah, let's, let's do that, I think. Yeah, we'll just, we'll do that. Let's jump back into Alchemist again. Let's start with the velvet um, <laughs> seeing if there are any filters here that might be interesting might just create a material that's a green. And we go two green.
Let's say about this one. I'm just gonna save this as my green velvet. My velvet green. Let's keep it consistent. And let's export it into its own folder. And again, we're going to export it 4K and wait for Substance Painter to finish. Sorry, wait for uh, Substance Alchemist to get its act together and finish. Mercury Barbecue, it's good to see you. Um, sorry, Android Lust, I didn't see a message there. It says the gold looks bronze to me, but I have uh, F Lux on until I need to do a color sensitive work. The gold looks bronze. Mm, it is gold, trust me. Are you talking about the velvet, the gold velvet color? Is that what you're, you're talking about? So you're talking about the, 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 the fabric Android Lust, not the, not the metal. <laughs> In which, if you are talking about the fabric, uh, it, it is more of a bronzy color than a gold color. You are right. But it's good to see you, Android. The me oh, the metal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it is gold. Trust me, it's gold. Come on, man, Alchemist is so slow. Um, Android Lost says, but it's because of my software. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it is gold, trust me. Um, it, you guys know, when I finish working on an asset, I post to my Twitter page at PhilDoss3D. Follow me on Twitter if you want a, a notification when I go live, because I always post to Twitter, but my schedule never changes. It's every Monday, Tuesday, I'm live. Uh, I always post what we worked on on, on the day to my Twitter page because then, then I put a link to watch the video uh, if you missed the stream. Zofo! Hey Zofo, how are you? I hope you're well. It's good to see you. Zofo. What you been up to? We're waiting for Substance to... Uh, sorry, why do I keep calling it Substance? For Alchemist to finish exporting this texture. This material. Um, yeah, it's good to see you so far. Uh, and again, anyone watching um, this, well, I'm working on assets for a game that's available to wishlist now on Steam called The House in the Hollow. You can type exclamation Steam in Twitch chat to get a link or you can click the graphic in my panels below my stream. There's a graphic there that um, will give you a link, but that's a link I've just popped into Twitch chat. To check the game out on Steam, it's not available to, to buy, but you can wishlist it. Oh, obviously you can't buy it because still, we're still making it. The game Studio and I are still making it. So. Not that that stopped other game developers from going into early, early access or early release or whatever they call it. Which is all well and fine, I'm not judging. Uh, I just don't particularly want to play a game that's not finished, so I don't understand people buying uh, playing, buying and playing early release games. Early access, I think they call it. I mean, I, I get it from a developer's point of view, it's it's good. Like, the game studio I'm working with, we, we could do an early access and we could get start getting an income stream on the game. Um, and I guess it's good for people if they want to try and... It's good for the developers because they can get feedback if there's anything that's breaking in the game and that sort of stuff. I just don't see the... the I don't see the advantage from a buyer's point of view. You know, people playing the game. But anyway, <laughs> that's just me. Uh, Zopo says, The scale of my model in Substance Painter is too big. I resized the OBJ in Blender. Uh, went to Edit Project Config and chose the new OBJ. Yep. I even rebaked, but when I send it to Marmoset, the size is the same. How do I resize my OBJ once I'm in Substance Painter? Um, I'll, I'll answer that in a minute. I'll try to anyway. 
Android Doss says some games never come out of early access. Well, that's true. Smurfberry says pretty sure Painted can't resize here. No, Painted can't resize. You need to do, you, you resize it in Blender. I can only sort of speak to Max. I, this is finally saved out, thank God. Um, and in 3D Studio Max, once you've resized an object, scaled it, however, you need to apply a reset X form. Now, I don't know what the equivalent in Blender would be of that, but that basically bakes all of the scaling back down into the model. And then you re-export the model and re-import it into Substance Painter. And then the scale will be the same when you bring it into Marmoset. But if you don't, at least in Max, if you don't apply a reset X form after you've done any scaling, uh, the model won't remember the scale. So you can scale it up all you like, uh, but in, until a reset X form is applied, at least in Max, the model won't be scaled correctly. So that's why I always throw in a reset X form after I've done any sort of scaling or manipulation, just to make sure it's all baked down in, into the mesh. I'm not, I'm not sure with Blender because I don't use Blender, so I'm not really sure what the equivalent would be. But I'd have a look for something like that in Blender. Mapri says in Blender, I think you, it would apply scale. It would it would be a place. Oh, there you go. Smurfberry would know he's, he's played with Blender. Uh, I haven't. Not that there's anything, I've got anything against Blender. I'm, I'm just a Max guy. I've used Max all, all of my career, so I like the Max. Um, so, uh, well, Zopo says, where do you apply scale in Blender? Uh, again, I can't help you with Blender, I'm afraid, but maybe Smurf will know. Um, let us jump into the right layer, which is the curtain. And throw down that new velvet we just made. Which will be the green when Substance Painter loads all of my material. There we go. I'm going to throw that above all the other layers in our folder. Um, actually, I forgot with this one, we need. To, I need to change the scaling. I think it was three we used. Six. So let's change the scaling on that to six. And we need to change the scaling on this to six. I, I just like the green more than I like the gold. But what we can try and do here is try and do a blend between the two of them. Let's start with the blending mode. Quite like the darker green. Let's go back to the normal green. Yeah, the normal green's a bit too greeny green, so if I change the blending mode to I don't mind that green either. Let's work with this green, it's a, uh, and let's throw it on a smart mask. Smurfer is uh, telling Zopo where to find the modifier, and says Blender is kind of weird in that object scale isn't always properly taken into account for a lot of operations, and you can't set a unit scale separately from the measurement. Um, I'm just going to play with the mixing here as well. Actually, I'm going to, we'll apply a smart mask actually, let's um, let's go with the surface warm. Again, I'm going to turn off the height information on that green layer. I'm going to go into the mask. I'm going to pull up on the blur. I don't know that this mask is really what I want. I don't think it is. Actually, I'm going to remove that mask. We'll, we'll 
We'll add a different mask. Remove mask. Let's look at this dust soft too. Zopo, thanks Mercury for the cool tips. It's trying to learn Blender. Blender's a great piece of 3D software. Like I, I, I say to you guys, we don't play favorites. Uh, just because I use Macs, I, I, that doesn't mean that I only like Macs. I think you use what you feel most comfortable with and probably more importantly, what you can afford. And Blender is completely free, so. Uh, and it's very good Blender. They're all good. All 3D software now is very good. Pulling up a little to bring up a bit of the gold underneath. So I want to get an interesting mix between the green and the gold. Now it is velvet, so it does have a little bit of a sheen to it, like a dull sheen. I prefer the green to the gold. I'm just wondering if I should knock back on the underlying gold, I think. It might be a bit too gold. No, I think that should work for what we want, I think. I think, I think, I think. I know. Uh, so yeah, use whatever 3D software you... Uh, some, like, some people prefer the interfaces in one particular program uh, to another. Like, I like a nice clean interface when I'm using my 3D software, that's why I like Macs. Um, I don't like a busy, terrible interface like ZBrush, which is why I don't tend to use ZBrush a lot. I do use it, but I, don't, I bitch about using it every time I have to. Because uh, so, the interface is really important to me. Confusion, my apologies, you've got to go to bed. See you later, Confusion. <laughs> Thanks for popping in and saying hi and being here. You have a good night's sleep, Confusion. My apologies for taking so long to say. Um, Zopho says, after I apply booleans in Blender, is there an easy way to clean up the geometry? Smurfberry says, not that I'm aware of, but I don't know enough about Blender to be certain. Yeah, I wouldn't know either. Android Lust says, if Blender has a remesher, yeah, possibly, but there's nothing wrong with doing it manually unless you're under a time constraint. Very true. Um, a remesher would be probably the best way to go. Uh, but I'm not sure whether Blender has a remesher. I don't like the gold under that green. <laughs> I'm looking at this and I just, 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 there's something about that gold I don't like. Um, I'm just trying to work out which layer it is. I think it's this layer I definitely don't like. This is a really light gold that we made. Um, let's see if we can change the blending mode on this. Let's 
probably better. Just darken it up a bit. I might even just pull back a bit on the mixing, I think. Actually, we'll pull up a bit on the mixing. Now that I changed the blending mode. Okay, I think it's this color here I don't like. So let's see if we can change the blending mode on this. Chill Nightbot, Smurfery says, oh no, Nightbox. It's been pretty good recently, Nightbot, but yeah. The <laughs> it can sort of get out of control sometimes, Nightbot. I don't know why. It has a mind of its own, that little bot. Um, so let's see, try changing the blending mode of this layer. that might be better. I just want to take out some of the yellow. Um, let's just play with the mask again now that we've made some changes. Should be alright, I think. More of a green, less of a gold. Um, I may have to come back and change the blue to a darker blue, but I'll I'll make that choice once I get the asset into the game and see what the blue color looks like. I'm just imagining the room, and I know that uh, in the room there's quite dark blues. Having a light blue might still work really well, but we won't know until we get it in. Uh, but let's save that. Let's export our textures for the curtain. Make sure we're in the right folder. Would help. Maybe for projects, models, study, chosen. Uh, no, no, it's actually, this is actually in the root folder, isn't it? Ballroom curtain, yep. Confusing myself, it's not for the study. And we're going to be exporting both of them. Uh, I'm going to export the wooden part uh, as a 1K texture, not a 2K texture. I think 1K will be plenty big enough. I will export the curtains as 2K, simply because they take that they're large and they take up a large part of the like in the in the actual game. They they take up a lot of room within the <laughs> within the room. <laughs> Uh, so we don't want the texture to be too small because the player will be able to walk pretty much right up to them. So we'll leave them at 2K, but we'll make the wooden deco and gold bits 1K. And export. Save settings. Save project. And we can call our curtains done, I think. You guys talking about uh, Blender? Um, so I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to move on to creating uh, to working on the snake box, which is sort of like 
an asset that's going to go along with the snake mirror we worked on. Was it yesterday we did the mirror? I think so. Yeah, the mirror. <laughs> so, oh no, did, did we do the curtain yesterday? No, we did the mirror. We started the curtain. We finished the curtain. Now we're going to move on to the um, the mirror, uh, the snake box, which sort of like accompanies the mirror. So let's jump into Max. We did save, didn't we? I'm pretty sure we did. Doesn't hurt to do it again. I'm just going to save this file and we're going to open up the snake box, which is this one here. So similar theme going on with snakes. Uh, it is the the box actually has a separate lid, so we'll be texturing it up separately. We'll actually we'll, we'll texture it all as one, but the lid will be a separate object in the um in the game. So let's start UV mapping, shall we? Let's start with the lid. We'll work our way down. So we want to send this over to Ryzen. Because so it's this one, I think we'll use this unwrapper. Let's send it back to Max. Now let's work on the main part of the box. And we'll UV map this in sections. So let's start with the body. should work for what we want and now let's work on the interior and this one has not worked for what we want so let's try a different one and this one as well it's not great why is that let's do an optimize That's better. Sometimes the uh, the automatic unwrap tool can just get a bit confused. So usually the optimize, there's a little O button down here called optimize behind me. I hit that button a few times, it usually fixes it. Okay, let's keep going here with uh, the decorative pieces let's try this one no that one's not gonna work let's try this one it should work for what we want let's keep going around the bottom I guess while we're at the bottom Okay, let's, this one should work, yep. Oh, make sure I'm in the right mode. Okay, now let's work on the decorative pieces that frame, actually let's, let's work on the feet. Why not? Let's 
let's try a different unwrap. Nope. I like the fact that it's uh, only it's creating just one cut line pretty much. We're getting a little stretching though. Let's just see if we can't paint that out a little bit. stretching but I don't think enough to worry about. Should be good. Let's keep going around with the rest of our feet. Again I'm just going to paint out some of the stretching. Make sure I'm in the right mode. <laughs> I thought I'd close my menu down, but I just was not in the right mode. Last foot. on the decorative pieces on the edges here. Legmog, it's good to see you, Legmog. How are you? Legmog says, hey, hey, Operation Lose Gut is back on track. Ran 11 kilometers yesterday and ran 8.7k today. That's pretty good. 11k, that's a long way. Weight must be melting off your leg, Mog. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're keeping fit. I'm glad the, um, the weight loss is back on track. Eleven K, I'm impressed. I'm impressed, like Mog eleven K. Uh so is are you still doing the gym or is it um running now, like Mog? Change to running instead of doing the gym or are you doing both? Now we have these little decorative bits at the top.
that one's not going to work. Let's try this one. Let's see if we can't get a better unwrap than that. And it's proving up to be a real pain to unwrap this one for some reason. <laughs> Why are you being so difficult? Why are you being so difficult? Um, Leg Mug says, man, I'd love to end this year with no beer gut. Ever since puberty, I've always pretty much had a belly. Uh, being a geeky computer nerd doesn't help that either. <laughs> Feel the sitting and constant eating. <laughs> Um, and man, I, I'm, it's plagued my anxiety ever since. I want to be free. <laughs> um, well, you guys know I used to be really heavy. I used to be quite, quite large. Like we're talking large um, when I was younger. Like I went through a period, yeah, where I got quite heavy and then I lost a lot of weight and I've been the way I am now for a good, a good 10 or 15 years. But um, I used to be, when I was younger, very, very heavy and the difference just in everyday life how you, like, like you can move around much more easily you don't get tired as quickly uh, you don't sweat as much all those things are good so I'm all, all for losing weight it's better for your heart too because one of the major killers in society today is heart disease so the thinner you are the, the less work your heart has to pump blood through your body don't get too thin though. You don't want to become anorexic, that's bad as well. But I understand why you'd want to lose weight. And it is it, it, it's a good it's good to get healthy. Mercury says you need a stationary bike in front of the computer desk, that's right. And you should make it so that the bike has to power the computer so if you don't keep pedaling, you don't you can't do your work on your computer. Um Lake Monk says I've actually got a desk treadmill, but I rarely use it. Yeah, this this little object here is proving quite quite difficult to UV map for some reason. It's being very annoying. I think um, this is probably. Uh, let me see if I can't do some fixing with with it manually. Actually, let me try and do an optimize on the mesh. It's, it's weird. It really does not want to unwrap cleanly. Let me see if I can't uh, do it manually. Probably the best sort of unwrap we're going to get from this model. Yeah. Again, uh, it's in an area where it's pretty well hidden, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. We've got a bit of stretching. I can live with a little bit of stretching. Come on. It's going to have to do a little bit of manual cleanup. Andrew Loss says, having a bike to power the computer would make you save your work. It certainly would every five seconds. <laughs> Andrew Loss says, no problem, wish I could help more. 
Thanks, guys, for helping out there. I mean, I I, I couldn't, unfortunately, because I don't know. I don't use Blender, but um, I appreciate you guys helping out. So. Isolate. So it's another reason you guys watching who aren't on the Discord server, the Phil Dust 3D Discord server, should join. Because there's... Uh, if I don't know the answer to something, one of the guys on Discord probably will. Because they're all 3D people, most of them. You don't have to be a 3D person to join the Discord, don't get me wrong. You can join just if because you want to. It's perfectly valid. Uh, but a lot of the guys on the Discord do, do 3D themselves and um, they can help you out if there's something that like I don't know about because it's not Max related or if it's specific to a piece of software you're using. Because the guys and girls on the Discord use all different sorts of software. Okay, let's tackle these snakes now. I left them till last because they're... I'm not sure how they're going to unwrap automatically. <laughs> Android last uh, says there's no problem. Okay, so I'm rereading the same thing. Stop it, Phil. Let's isolate one of the snakes. And let's see now. Probably not too bad, actually. We do have a cut line down the back here, but that's uh, up against the edge of the box, which is never seen. And we don't have, a, well, we do have a cut line down here. Let's see if we can't stitch that together, clean it up a little bit. Bill hits the right key here, of course. We gotta clean a line. Okay, let's move on to the next snake. See, it, it unwrapped this one automatically in a much better way than the um, other one. I didn't have to do. I don't have to do any stitching. Is good. Let's move on to the next snake. Same with this one, should be fine. And the last snake. Okay, I forgot about the decorative piece at the front here, so let's do that.
No, I didn't like that unwrap. No, I don't like that unwrap. All of that unwrap. All of that unwrap. It's really having a problem here with this. Again, it's probably because the geometry is such a weird shape. Oops, I went back too far. Let's see here. So it gets half of the model okay, but the bottom half it's losing its mind. So what I might try and do is might try and do a little bit of manual cutting here. The wrong one. Let's cut it through here. Looks like I forgot that one there. And let's slice it through here. it through here as well. Wow, this is just a nightmare to try and unwrap this piece of geometry. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at through here. wondering whether I should try and un do an unwrap on this in Max as opposed to Ryzen. Sometimes the Max's tools do a d better job. I think, I think I might. So I really don't like what Ryzen is doing here. Hmm. That's not too bad. Um, that's the back again. <laughs> that's pretty terrible. But that's never seen in, it will never be seen. It's facing the actual box itself. So if I go back to show, you see that most of the, all those problems are actually on the back of the mesh. We do have a little bit of a problem here. 
but again, uh, this is going to be a metal, so it should be okay. I don't think it'll be noticeable. Android Dust says normally Ryzen does a better unwrap on complicated geometry compared to something something simple. I know. Sometimes Ryzen can just lose its mind, depending on what it, what it's trying to unwrap. You can be, it can be something really simple, and it just can't do it. Whereas it can handle really complex stuff um, easily. It's just the way the algorithm works. Sometimes, sometimes it loses its mind. Sometimes it doesn't. You never can tell. Uh, so sometimes it is just easier and better to go back into like Max and do it using Max's tools for specific bits of geometry that Ryzen seems to have a problem with anyway. See, that, that's a complicated shape as well, and it didn't have a problem with that. Just that main bit through there, it really didn't like. We had to help it by doing some manual cutting. Not that one. Not that one. Um, probably the best we're going to get, but we'll just try the others to see if we can get a better result. Might be a bit cleaner, we'll go with this one. So, I think we've UV mapped all of that up. I don't think there's anything else I've forgotten. Pretty sure I have everything done. Let's send it back to Max and then we'll fix our texel density. So, first things first, let's uh, do an unwrap on the lid. And just make sure it's all packed nicely. And let's do an unwrap on the box. And get it all packed nicely. Let's check our Texel density by throwing down a checker. Oh no, we'll scale it 40 by 40. And our Texel density looks nice and even. Nothing's jumping out at me as being incorrect. So let's get rid of the checker. Let's do a quick save. And now we can do some vertex coloring to get it ready to take into Substance Painter to do some texture mapping, uh, texture painting. So. Um, let's start with the lid. I'm just going to go, go into isolation mode here so I'm not distracted by everything else. Let us collapse our stack. And how do we want to texture this up? We have a, a ring around the outside here. I want to make that a separate color. So let's make that a yellow. And then the rest of it's pretty much it's actually what I might do here is I might separate that top piece from this piece here. So I'm just going to go into polygon mode and deselect these. So let's make that its own color. Which means we have to make these their own color.
and that should be everything for the lid. Again, I'm just going to go into Object Properties and double check I haven't forgotten anything. It looks like I have forgotten this bit through here, through the bottom. So there's the bottom of the lid, which will make the same colour as the top here. Oh, will we? No, let's make this its own colour as well, just in case we want the option of changing it to something completely different. Uh, and then that leaves this ring here, which we will make the same as this ring here, I think. So we'll make that a yellow. And now we should have everything ready. Cool. Turn off object colour. Go out of isolation mode and let's work on the main box now, back in isolation mode. Collapse that stack. Let's make the interior its own colour. I'm just going to make it like a mid-grey. Uh, the snakes are all going to be the same material, so let's make them... I don't know, it's really dark purple. Now the box is going to be its own colour as well, so let's make that... I don't know, an orangey colour, brownie orange. Uh, the gemstone itself will be a separate material inside of the Unreal Engine. I'm going to give it its own shade or like a, a gemstone shader. So I'm not going to um, give that a vertex colour. I'm going to give that, I'm actually going to detach it just temporarily. And I'm going to give it its own material. I'm just going to change the color to anything like it. I'm just going to make it a mid green just to remind me that this is like a separate material. Snake box gem. I'm going to assign that to that gemstone. Okay, back to our coloring. Uh, these are going to be their own material. So let's make them, I don't know. A dark green. Uh, this middle bit will be its own material. Running out of colours, let's make that a dark blue. And then the ring around here will be its own material. Let's make that, I don't know, make it this, this colour. Okay, so that leaves uh, these bits through the side. Let's make them their own colour. And that also leaves these little bits at the top. Let's make them... I am, I'm running out of colours. Let's make it that colour. Uh, so what's left? The feet. I don't think I did the feet. No, I didn't. Okay. Let's make them a really deep grey. Uh, now I'm going to turn on vertex colouring to see if there's anything I've missed. No. Okay, so... Probably all the bits that are white. Oh. Actually, no. I'll, I'll make the make this bit, these bits, 
a different color just in case I want to give it a separate material. I don't know, let's make it um, 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 um. I don't think we used red yet, did we? Let's make it a red color. So now, gray, white, purple, green, blue, red. I think we're okay. Let's turn off vertex coloring. We have the green for our gemstone. Let's go out of isolation mode. And let's save our project. Um, I don't know if I want to tackle doing the texture, texture blah, 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 blah. <laughs> doing the texturing and substance on this today. We save the project. Um, we might leave texturing this up until I'm back on Monday next week, I think. Because there's a lot to texture up and I'd like to do it all in one sitting. So I think it's probably a better way to go. We got a lot done today. Got our curtain done. We UV mapped and uh, vertex colored the snake box, which is what we will start working on next week. Yeah, I just, I don't, because this, the stream is, we're, we're nearly at the end of the stream now. Um, I don't really want to start texturing it up. I'd like to do it all in one sitting. And that way it's easier for me too. Like when I, when I post to my Twitter page on, on what we worked on today for the video, I have an image that I can use. So like today I'll use this image for the curtain because that's, even though we worked on other stuff, this is mainly what we worked on. Uh, so this will be the image that will go with my Twitter post. Uh, and then the snake box next week on Monday will be the image for, for that stream. And then after the snake box, uh, I probably only want to do the floor. I've already done the wall, the uh, the texture I'm using, the, <laughs> the object for the walls for the study and for the sitting room. I'm going to use the same walls in both rooms. Uh, but it's probably only really the floor for the study that's left to do and then we can start putting it together in Unreal. So. Monday will be the snake box. If we get the snake box textured up within two hours, then uh, we'll start doing the floor. But so we'll say Monday snake box, Tuesday will be the floor, which will, well, won't take two hours. It's really simple. Uh, and then probably jumping into Unreal to start putting everything together. So yeah, if everything goes to plan or if I keep to that schedule. Well, I do want to work on the stairwell for the uh, attic as well. But I like to try and keep everything together as we're working on it. So at the moment we're doing the study, then we're going to be moving up to the attic. But I'd like to actually start texturing up the, the wooden stairwell that I've created for the attic. We'll see how we go. I'll see how I feel next week. <laughs> uh, what else could I do in the last 15 minutes? Uh, I don't think there really is anything. I don't want to start... Yeah, no, I don't want to start the uh, snake box until next week. We might finish up 15 minutes early today, guys. Phil might finish 15 minutes early, I think. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else I can do. Is there any gallery work people want me to look at? No, nothing new in the gallery. Hmm. No. Yeah, we might finish up a little bit early. Um, you wish you completed something for the gallery. Well, you've already shown some really cool stuff in the gallery. You're, you're a machine, Android Lust. A machine. Some of the, all the work that you've posted, really lovely work too. Again, guys, join the Pildust 3D Discord server. Go through the work that people have posted in the gallery. Because a lot of it is really, really lovely work. You guys do really nice work. Um, so if you do have something you want to show, post it in the gallery. Join the Pildust 3D Discord. That's the link I've just popped in chat. But if you're watching back my stream on, if you're watching it back at another time, under the video section, you can, um, in my panels, there's a little blue graphic that says join the Field Dust 3D Discord. Just click that uh, at any time and, and you can get an invite link to join the Discord server. But I do want to thank you guys so very much for hanging out with me today and for watching. 
Um, I will be back as usual on Monday next week at 5 p.m. Pacific time. We'll pick up where we left off here. We will texture up the snake box uh, and then we'll probably either do the floor or the wooden stairs, a spiral staircase for the attic. I'll see how I feel. <laughs> Wax Kink. It's good to see Wax Kink. Um, so yeah, thanks guys though for hanging out and watching. I Have a great weekend. Stay safe. I'll be back on live again on Monday next week at 5pm. You'll post something you did a while ago. As a joke, you can post whatever you like in the gallery. Um, yeah, so remember, if you want a reminder when I'm live, follow my Twitch channel. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at PhilDoes3D if you want a reminder that way, because I always post when I go live to my Twitter account. Uh, of course, there's a PhilDoes3D YouTube channel, which uh, has all my previous streams, but not as up-to-date as uh, Twitch because I'm an affiliate and I have to keep things exclusive to Twitch for a certain amount of time. <gasps> Uh, and don't forget to join the Discord server as well if you want. You guys have a great weekend, and I will see you all on Monday next week. <laughs> you guys take care. See ya.